Hello everyone, this is Bill Breeden, and welcome to a solar observing session here that I'm going to be doing uh, today. This is April 4th, 2021, and I've got my Schmidt Cassegrain Mead LX90 telescope here that I'm going to set up. So I've got my tripod, I've got my stool here, my power pack. And the telescope here down in this case. So you're going to be with me here as we set it up. tripod using this large bolt underneath. Tighten it by hand only. And the sun is right about there, high up in the south. It's about 2.15 in the afternoon, so it's just past the meridian. So I'm going to point the telescope away from the sun before I set it up and before I put the solar filter on. Loosen up the altitude uh, nut right here. And as I said, the sun's over here, so I'm pointing the scope the other way. Now I'll go ahead and take the, the cover off. And I'll take the back cap off. Put on the visual back. And I, I live in the city, so it can be kind of noisy back here. So hopefully you can hear me. We just had a big tree removed so I can actually see the sky more. Okay, next I'm going to put on my uh, star diagonal. This is a Teleview iBright Dielectric. Okay. And before I started, when I set up the tripod, I used the level to make sure that it was level. This is my finder scope. I'm going to go ahead and mount it, although I won't be using it because we're not going to point it at the sun. That would not be smart. So I'm going to go ahead and put this cap over it. The only reason I'm going to mount it is if later we decide to do some bird watching, we can use it for that. It mounts onto the top of the tube in this dovetail. Just slide it on. Tighten it up with the two thumb screws. And now this is the Mead Auto Star 497. It attaches to the handles with this grip here. So we put this grip here on the handle and just tighten it by hand. Then slip the auto star into it. Just makes a convenient place for it to sit and plug it into the HBX or hand box port. I'm gonna go ahead and close up the telescope case and store it a little out of the way so we don't trip over it. Okay, we're uh, almost done here. We still have the, the azimuth axis is still loose. 
I've tightened up the altitude axis to hold the scope in place. So now before we do anything else, let's put on our thousand oak solar filter. And this is a white light solar filter. It covers up the entire aperture of the front end of the scope. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this solar filter onto the front end of the scope. It covers up the entire aperture. It fits snugly, but if we were at a public event, I would attach electrical tape around it as, a, as another precaution. But since it's just us out here, it'll be fine. Okay. We're almost ready. I'm going to go ahead and plug the telescope into a power source. I get a lot of questions about this, so I'm going to share it with you. Okay. Mead's telescope have a 12 volt input, and the center post is positive. So if you buy your adapter from Mead, it'll be polarized that way. I've I created mine from radio parts from Radio Shack. This is a 12 volt cigarette lighter style adapter, and it's got this end on it here, size N, N as in November. And what you do is you match up the the positive to where it says tip, so that the positive end of the charge from the battery ends up in the tip here and here, on both ends. One end in the 12 volt power source. I'm using a jump start battery here with a cigarette lighter port. And the other end in the 12 volt power port in the telescope. So we're going to plug it in, make sure the little light comes on on the cord, make sure we have power. All right, let's turn it on, make sure we have power. Alright, we've got power. And for today's solar observing, I'm using the Orion Highlight Plossel 32mm. This eyepiece uh, seems to be really good for this telescope for solar observing. Auto star, let's let's find the sun in the sky. What you do, look at the shadow of your telescope, and when it's as small as possible, you're probably pretty close to having the sun in your in your eyepiece. Remember, you've got a solar filter, you've got your you've got your finder protected with a cover. Okay, I've got the shadow pretty small, so I can see. The sun's disc in the eyepiece, it's about halfway in there, so that's good for now. And we've got the telescope running. So now we've got to tell it to track the sun. Now the sun is not in the database. So what we're going to do is do a, a phony baloney alignment on an object that's known to be close to the sun right now. And right now that would happen to be Venus. I think Venus is only a couple of degrees away from it. So let's go to our menu, put in the date, put in the time, 2.42, daylight savings time, and now let's find the object, Venus. Solar system, Venus, 
and we hold down the enter key to synchronize on it. And now the telescope will track the sun pretty closely. You can make minor adjustments now with your arrow keys. Yeah, make sure your altitude and azimuth clamps are tight so when the telescope tries to move, it actually moves. And the sun's gone behind a cloud right now, but when it comes back out, we will continue. But that's pretty much all there is to it. There's a group of sunspots I'm interested in viewing. So, again, this is Bill Breeden. Thank you for uh, sitting with me while I set up my scope for some solar. Got a cloud drifting in front of the sun at the moment. Kind of a neat looking view, but not really what we're going for. So once this cloud gets out of here, we'll come back. Not really much going on on the sun right now. Good. That sunspot group must be on the other side or on this on the edge. Yeah. 